There's light at the end of the tunnel in Carson City. Ahead in a live report from the state capitol, we'll see what's happened at the special session that's giving everyone hope. Plus, find out how our state's medical crisis is being used to lure nurses out of Nevada. And George Knapp takes us on an exclusive tour of the state's first brothel resort. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. This morning, the state Senate passed its version of the bill to end the medical malpractice insurance crisis. The assembly passed its version of the bill just after midnight last night. Soon it will be up to a conference committee to hammer out a compromise. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. It's day three of the special session. The process seemed to be falling apart last night, but now it looks like it's back on track. Channel 8 Eyewitness News has live team coverage of the special session. John Ralston has the politics behind the process coming up. But we start with John Summers live from Carson City with the latest. John. Well, Paul and Gary, things have really picked up here in Carson City, especially in the last hour, enough to indicate there could be a solution to the malpractice insurance crisis as early as tomorrow. That's good news after a bumpy day and a half, especially in the Senate. Before voting on the Senate's version of a medical reform bill, Senator Dina Titus blasted her counterparts for significantly changing the bill. Governor Kenny Gwynn asked them to pass. I endorsed the governor's consensus bill, a bill that he called a critical first step toward a long-term solution. Titus said she supported the governor's bill up until the insurance industry got involved. At the 11th hour, after being noticeably absent for months from this entire process, the greedy insurance companies weighed in for the first time and unfortunately have misled some well-intended doctors into thinking that the governor's bill was not a good bill. That's when the bill appeared to be falling apart. The insurance industry, industry is weighing in now, pushing and leaning on the doctor, saying, yeah, we know, we know you agree to all these things, but you got to get more, you got to get more. Even though the spokesperson and for the insurance really industry deal. says they can't say what getting more will do. You have to have a better idea of how this is going to work out in terms of the courts and the process. That's what they call predictability. In the end, some senators feel they did their best to come up with something they hope will work. Senate version is essentially, uh, I think, a better version. There are less exceptions from the cap, but there's ample opportunity to protect the claims of, of victims who have um, a catastrophic illness. And an upset governor seems to have cooled off. We took all of those key points, which were good points, and we, we added to them. We kind of, and, and that was good. I spoke with the governor this morning, and he said, good job. He said, you made it even better. Now, as is part of procedure, what happened after each House approved their bill is they swapped bills to start making amendments on those. Well, the Senate has made some amendments on the Assembly's bill. They will vote on that, and as soon as they do, they'll take that bill back to the Assembly to find out what they think about it. That's expected to be rejected. At that point, a conference committee will then be assembled with parties from both houses. Uh, they will be the ones to actually get together and write this final bill that will be taken to Governor Gwynn for his signature. Find out what the governor thinks about today's proceedings coming up tonight on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 11 as we'll talk to him live right here in front of the legislature building. For now, I'm John Summers, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. Be nice. Maybe we have an answer by then. How much is all of this costing, John? $40,000 a day. This is day three, so we're up to $120,000. We expect to be here tomorrow. That's going to raise it up to about $160,000. Again, everyone's hoping, if it, if it all turns out right, that this will all be over by the end of the day tomorrow. It's possible it could drag on to Friday. You just never know what could happen. John, thank you very much. Nevada's nurse midwives are calling on the gover to, governor to include them in any tort reform efforts. There are 13 certified nurse midwives in Nevada, though few in number. CNMs performed nearly 2,000 births last year. That's why midwives are concerned that Governor Gwynn's proposal to cap malpractice lawsuits only addresses physicians' liability. It doesn't include advanced practice nurses or certified nurse midwives. We um, have the potential to be excluded and um, run out of business. Our malpractice premiums will go through the roof, making us unavailable for the women of Nevada. 
Today, the Senate has heard the nurse midwives plea and amended their version of the tort reform proposal to include CNMs. Of course, the Senate and Assembly are still debating a final plan. And debating is what goes on in politics. The politics of this special session has led to these debates. Channel 8 political analyst John Ralston joins us from Carson City with more. John. Well, John Summers told you about the public process, but there's always a private process going on here in Carson City, too. The doctors and the lawyers are meeting right now. They're meeting with legislators. They're meeting with representatives of the governor. They want to reach a deal so that that public process doesn't take too long. That is, they're just working over language now. Which exceptions are going to be put back in? How much medical error reporting will be allowed? It's the, it's the last phase of what goes on special session or regular session. It's a negotiating. Some of it is actually done by people who are elected, Paul and Gary. <laughs> What's your prediction on all of this, John? Where are we headed, at least time-wise? Well, I, I think that John Summers was right, that the optimism is that they're going to be out by tomorrow. But you never know. Things could come up. For instance, the building is now abuzz with reports that a grassroots doctor's wives group from Sunrise Hospital organizing a rally to protest against any exceptions being put in the bill. They want a, a mirror image of the California, the so-called microplan, $250,000 cap, no exceptions. That can stir up people to call their legislators and could scuttle what's going on up here. Best case scenario, I think they're out tomorrow. Worst case, I think Friday. John, the governor was pretty upset with some people in his own party. Has that been smoothed over? I think that he might still be upset with a couple of them, Paul and Gary, but I think that the governor actually likes this bill. He's got a bit of a problem, though. He has talked about Republicans with heart, and that has to do with these catastrophic cases, dead children, paralysis, total blindness, paraplegia. He wanted those in the bill, he said, but now he is not raising objections to the Senate taking out those exceptions. He's saying the Senate has a superior bill. The key to whether this bill is effective, though, for those victims is in the language. You know, they can change a comma, they can add an and, and it can totally change the meaning of a bill. Will lawyers be able to make the case in these catastrophic cases? That's what it's going to come down to for that part of it. Thank you, John. Okay. Well, here's what we know about all that's going on in Carson City. The state Senate, as we've told you, passed its version of the bill today. Now lawmakers are working on a compromise bill. The final bill could be ready by late tomorrow. The medical malpractice insurance crisis may also be affecting the nursing shortage in Nevada. It may be one of the reasons that other states are targeting our health care professionals. Eyewitness News anchor Colleen May has the story. Join us. Oregon is a great place to live. At least that's what the state wants those in the health care profession to believe. I think it's very complimentary for the state of Nevada that other states would come here. Um, it speaks highly of the quality of our health care professionals. This television ad campaign is airing in Nevada. The goal? To entice health care professionals to move to Oregon. Join us. Your future is here. Nevada has one of the worst nurse to population ratios in the country. In Nevada, there are 520 nurses per 100,000 people. That's compared to the national average of 786 nurses. With numbers like these, Nevada cannot afford to lose nurses. But local hospital officials say they're not worried. We have such great weather and we have no income tax. So many positive reasons for people to live and work here. The national attention on Nevada's medical malpractice crisis may also convince other states that this may be a good time to recruit here. The nursing shortage is a nationwide problem. The government estimates that by the year 2008, we may need almost a half million more nurses just to meet the demand. Since there's such a limited pool of nurses and healthcare workers, and there's so many opportunities available. In addition to offering incentives, Nevada is doing what it can to attract nurses. Places like Sunrise Hospital are airing commercials nationwide touting Nevada and its health care community. Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. A bill passed in last year's legislature to develop a plan to double the capacity of nursing schools in Nevada. The Board of Regents passed the plan. Now the state is looking for a way to fund it. UNLV is getting money to help with the nursing shortage. The Department of Health and Human Services gave a $20,000 grant to the university to use for scholarships. The grant will be used to help students in the nursing program pay for tuition, books, and fees. As part of the program, students getting money will be required to work in areas with a shortage of nurses. We have some new information tonight about that body found next to a dumpster earlier this week. Metro Police tell Channel 8 Eyewitness News the victim is Carrie McCullough. 
Her body was found Monday afternoon near the dumpster at an apartment complex near Cheyenne and Michael Way. Police have also named a suspect in that murder. He is the victim's brother, Brad McCullough. Right now, police are searching for him. Brad McCullough, who's 49, shared an apartment with the victim. Brad McCullough is 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighs about 150 pounds, has long brown hair that reaches the middle of his back. He usually wears it in a ponytail. He drives a white Nissan 300ZX with Nevada license plate 260EBG. If you have any information about Brad McCullough, you're asked to call Metro or the Secret Witness Hotline. County Commission today changed the rules on lap dances at local strip clubs. Critics said what's been going on bordered on prostitution. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Tom Jones is at the County Government Building with the latest. Tom. Well, Gary, Commissioner Yvonne Atkinson Gates says she wanted this new law because exotic dancers are out of control. Some of those dancers came here to defend themselves and also express their dissatisfaction with some restrictions on lap dances. But how will I eat? How will I support my children? How will I take care of my family if you take away my job? Please consider this. I am the hearing on a proposal to reform the erotic dance industry was oftentimes emotional and featured personal attacks. Uh, I think it's sad what you're trying to do with this industry. You are very misinformed. You have some repressed sexual ideas of your own. I said shut up. I figured you would. No, no. You are wrong. You are wrong. This is the fireworks had to do with Commissioner Gates pushing of a law that would restrict the way exotic dancers could perform lap dances. Gates told the crowd the ordinance isn't about her. It's about doing what I think is right for this community. Gates says illegal lap dances leads to prostitution, sexually transmitted diseases, and crime. Metro officers showed an undercover video of dancers selling sex and performing unlawful dances with customers. Despite that, some in the audience wondered if police could enforce the new law. What are we going to have? The tape measure police to make sure that these people are far enough away? From Despite that, the commission went on to vote five to one to pass this new law. Now, what it means as far as lap dancing is concerned, the exotic dancers can still lap dance, but they cannot use their breast or buttocks in a customer's groin area. Also, anyone under 21 years of age can no longer work in a strip club. This new law takes effect September 1st. Tom Jones, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Tom, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commuters are getting to the end of rush hour. Victor Woodall is in Chopper 8 over US 95 at the infamous Rainbow Curve. What's going on, Victor? Well, the sun has cooled down after it went in behind the clouds, and so has traffic. Take a live look now from US 95. I actually switched up a little bit. I'm sorry. I told you I was going to be over the Rainbow Curve, but now I'm near the Valley View Mall, and uh, things are looking great on 95 North and South. 15 North and South is also marvelous no backups no accidents to speak of also no accidents on any surface streets and that's a check on your afternoon commute for now from chopper 8 i'm victor woodall channel 8 <laughs> eyewitness news live thanks victor palm trees pools and a dungeon that's just some of what customers get at the state's first resort brothel up next george knapp will take us on a tour and finding a perfect fit for prosthetic limbs see the new technology that's making it possible Later in this hour, some of the biggest power users in the Valley are going to get their electricity from someone other than Nevada Power. We'll show you what that means for the rest of us. First, though, Kevin is in to tell us about your neighborhood weather. Kevin. All right, Paul and Gary, thank you very much. High clouds have finally made it into the Las Vegas Valley sky. We'll tell you how long they'll be around and what they'll do to our weather over the next couple of days. We'll also take a look at the weekend forecast and beyond, plus all the neighborhood high temperatures. We'll tell you see how hot it got today. That information is just a few minutes away. Eyewitness News will be right back. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader.